everyone. Welcome back to Steins Gate. In the last episode, we tried to throw a party for Suzuha and it didn't go too well. And then she ran away from us because I guess she didn't meet her dad. So let's find out what's going to happen today. The next day, there isn't a cloud in the sky. Let's check our, e our mail while we're at it. It's hard to believe it rained all night. I guess we can't. I keep checking the Braum tube workshop, though the window shot, the morning passes without a sign of Suzuha. There we go. Maybe. They say the satellite disappeared. I wonder what happened. Did it fly away? It's like a magic trick. Well, good night. Check the news, Okari, and the satellite up and disappeared. Oh no, lol. Why would you lol that? Huh. She's probably long gone from Akiba by now. <laughs> she doesn't know who she's dealing with. But she's a pawn in my game. Destined to f fight for me at Ragnarok. At the stroke of noon, I activate the phone wave name subject to change. The destination is my phone. Yesterday, around 4 p.m., the discharge phenomenon occurs as normal. Don't listen to Chris. Pursue Suzuha. The floor shakes violently. Squinting against the glare, I send the mail. Mail sent. 409337. The versions change. My brain shakes violently. My vision flickers. As the vertigo passes, I hear my heartbeat and feel the warm blood coursing through my body. I blink slowly. That was the sensation of reading Steiner activating. And so I know Suzuha is ours. I hurry down the stairs. I step outside and look to the front of the building. What belongs there has returned. The bicycle. A mountain bike. Polished to a shining finish. And on the bench next to it, looking up into the summer sky, is... Amane Suzuha. Ohio. Good morning, part-time warrior. I try to remain calm as I call out to her. Sup. She greets me in her usual listless fashion. Slacking off. It's not like anyone's gonna come. And besides, I was up all night partying. I'm really tired. You were partying? With who? Were you drinking Okabe Rintaro? Big no-no. You're only 18. We have shifted from the world line where we failed to stop Suzuha from leaving to one where we succeeded. As a result, the events of yesterday changed. You couldn't find your father, so we held the last supper to make you a test subject, correct? <laughs> yeah, I remember you saying something like that. Thanks for all your help yesterday. My memory is a bit fuzzy. Remind me again how we captured you? Wait, were you really drinking last night? Just tell me. Well, I was on my way home from the time machine meet when... Whoa, wait a second. Time machine meet? Yep. That's the same offline meet that Dada was going to. Was that where your father was supposed to appear? I said so yesterday, didn't I? So you were going home and then... You, Hashira Itaru, and Shina Mayori appeared out of nowhere. You brought me to the lab, and we partied all night long. So my pursuit of Suzuha was a resounding success. I can't help but smile at how smoothly things went. Suzuha, meanwhile, looks back up at the clear blue sky. Yesterday sure was fun. Her tone is sincere. It would have been more fun if not for Makisei Krisu. The apple pie she made was deadly. But Urushibara's kuri was awesome. Your lab seems kind of like, uh, like a clubhouse. It's nice. Everyone gets along and you're always smiling. I've never had so much fun in my life. Hmm, sounds like Suzuha had a pretty dark childhood. 
Maybe she was bullied in school. Could that be related to her father's disappearance? Part-time warrior. As promised, you are now my test subject. But I already told you I don't know his email address. Then we'll have to postpone the experiment until you find out. By the way, the phone wave name subject to change used in an experiment in our lab's greatest secret. You must be a lab man to guarantee your science. Lab man? Lab man? Short for laboratory member. When you become a lab man, you become one of us. Can I really join? You don't have a choice in the matter. From this day forth, you are lab man 008. Suzuha lowers her head, no doubt awed by my proclamation. I hear what sounds like a sniffle. Then she looks up, revealing a smile. I guess I don't have a choice, huh? I'm all yours. You're not going to leave? Nope. Maybe there's still a chance to find my dad. You are a lab mem now. If there's anything we can do, you need only ask. By the way, do you have any leads? Suzuha hesitates a little. Then she stands up and turns to me. Her expression is grave. My father calls himself Titor. Wait, Teeter? As in that Teeter? You know about him. He might be using a different code name though. I just don't know. I don't just know about him. He's been active on the ad channel for the past several weeks. I opened the ad channel thread on my phone to show it to Suzuha. Look, there's someone posting named John Teeter. Suzuha stares at the screen. This solves the puzzle. Your father's on ad channel. Uh, you're right. Hey, shouldn't you be more surprised? Well, it's not him. How do you know? You just said your father calls himself Teeter. I can tell. This Teeter isn't my dad. That's a strange way to put it. It's almost like she knows who's behind John Teeter. As if to answer my suspicions, Suzuha continues. His name's not John. The name of my father used was... Beryl Teeter. Beryl Teeter? <gasps> we have a new chapter. We unlock some achievement. I don't know how you would unlock other achievements in here. Uh, anyways, I open my eyes to a deep scarlet sky. On my back, lying face up. The sky is vast, the color is ominous, I've never seen it like this before. Where am I? I sit up. There's nothing here. A wasteland stretches to the horizon. Nothing but rocks, dust as far as the eye can see. No plants, no water, no sun, no moon, no warmth, no cold. Not a single breath of wind. It looks like hell. A frozen world. It can't be Earth. Mars. It... C I could believe. Why am I here? This must be a dream. I give up thinking about it and lie down in the sand. I guess I'll wake up soon. I should just wait until then. I wait, but the dream shows no sign of ending. Have I ever had a dream this lucid before? There's a terrible ringing in my ear that keeps me awake. I realize that it's the sound of silence. My belongings are gone. I have no watch, no phone. The lack of motion numbs my sense of time. How long have I been lying here? It might have been only a second. It might have been three days. An epiphany. The concept of time is a human construct. The universe at large has no use for it. Time is a cage that we create to feel secure within its walls. We can forget our own insignificance. I'm thirsty. 
It hurts to breathe. This voice is this void is no place for human. We're not strong enough to live in a world without time. Tears fill my eyes. What do they mean? I no longer know. I want to die. Yes, let's die. But what is death? To be frozen in time? Time stopped for me long ago. How can I die in a world that is already dead? Everything inside me is crumbling away. Who am I? I can barely recall. My soul is melting into the void. Is someone there? Anyone? Something moves in the corner of my eye. Impossible. I try to move my eyes, but I've forgotten how. Found you, Okarin! A pleasant voice silenced the buzzing in my ears. It reminds me of who I am. Okabe Rintaro. This time my eyes move. There's a girl sitting on a nearby rock. I recognize her. My frozen brain comes alive. Her presence breathes new life into this dead world. Mayori? My brain is still half asleep. I cannot speak. This, it's Mayori. Shina Mayori, my oldest friend. She smiles at me, swinging her legs. This is Earth, you know. 700, uh, 70 million years ago. Some scary people sent you here in a time machine. This is a dream, right? Mayushi went to look for you and found Okarins from many, many world lines. You're one of many Okarins, and also the original. Mayushi is many is one of many Mayushis, and also the original. And now Okarin and Mayushi are going to die here. This is a dream, right, Mayori? But I know that another Okarin and Mayushi will pick up where we left off 70 million years in the future. So everything's a okay. This is a dream. Gah. I jerk awake on top of the sofa. My body is drenched in sweat. It was a dream. I must have fallen asleep some time around noon. What a horrible nightmare. I guess that threatening email I got is still weighing on my mind. Still, my eerie had to save me? Even in a dream that's unacceptable. I'm the one who saves her. That's the way it should be. Besides, Mayuri's not smart enough to talk about time travel like that. I sit up and look around the room. She's right where I expect to find her. In front of the TV watching Rainet Kakeru DVD. On the screen, the Upa riding Kakeru's shoulder is screaming something unintelligible. I wish I had an Upa. I look at her sitting there all spaced out. Mayuri needs my protection. That dream was wrong. And on that note, we're gonna leave this episode here! <laughs> wow, that was a very weird dream. And if you're familiar with the series, or at least I'm familiar with the anime and the new series, uh, it gives you a little bit something to think about. Uh, I don't know, my husband and I have been theorizing a lot about Okarin and the different timelines and what happened. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, I find it fascinating and I hope you guys do too. So if you enjoy the series and you want to see more from me, then please subscribe and do all that YouTube shit. And in the next episode, we are going to uh, apparently check our email and chug this Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so I'll see you then.